beautiful soul welcome to my channel my name is joanna if this is your first time here thank you so much for being here my intention is very simple and very pure i my intention is to help you see how powerful you are that's the essence of everything i do so all the information that i receive from higher guidance is with that in mind so that you realize how powerful you are how we all are so if you are into that sort of thing um keep on listening and, and see what you what you get out of this and if you would if you like this if you would click the like button the subscribe button uh the notification button it really helps this channel to promote uh this information i think that's important information we all want to feel empowered for those of you who are returning, thank you so much for coming back. Without you, I wouldn't do this. And I keep saying it over and over again. I absolutely love what I do. What is it that I do? I <clears throat> bring forth information that I consider our higher consciousness, uh, me being the vehicle and this higher consciousness flows through me. Uh, the purpose of this flow is to help us, to educate us, to help us understand ourselves better because that's where our power is so we're going to do three piles today is there anything that i'm forgetting uh make sure you grab yourself free transformational tools uh, there's a link right down below uh, i've added some new files in there and uh, when you do that you're going to be subscribed to my uh, email list and i have uh, something really exciting coming up in the next few weeks that I think you're really gonna like, and you've been asking for it quite a lot. So it's coming, um, but you will be notified uh, from me uh, on, a, on a separate occasion. So uh, if you get yourself the free tools, you automatically will be on my mailing list, unless you choose not to, of course, and that's up to you. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we are almost at the end of summer. September 21st, I believe, is the first day of fall, at least, um, here in this hemisphere and um, things are changing times are changing so what I was presented with today is to give you an idea what you might be expecting over the next three to four months or until the end of this year and what are the messages that you are um, what are the messages that would be of value to you at this particular time because of your own circumstances. So I have divided this into three piles. Each pile will have its own flow and each pile will have different components, but you may be drawn to more than one pile, in which case, if that's where your intuition is guiding you, then there is a piece or nugget of information in a different pile for you as well. So my aim is always to help you trust yourself so that you can um, own your experiences. and trusting yourself in where you're being guided or towards which pile is you learning how to trust yourself and uh, that in my book um, is very important so first thing i also well second thing i want to say is that before we go through the messages and the theme is what is most important for you to hear right now to help you to help you improve to whatever but we have, we have, we also have, we're also are doing this collectively. In other words, what is it that you individually need, but also what does the world as a whole need right now? So this is, I have four points where we as humanity collectively need to hear right now. Number one, be patient and quiet yourself so you can begin to know the whispers of your heart. Your heart is trying to communicate with you. What does your heart want more than anything right now? And how can we, what, we can, what can we support to what the collective heart needs? So describe to me collective heart. At the end of the day, I believe what humanity really wants at the end of the day is peace. Peace is just better. 
it's less stressful, it's less anxiety, it's less fear, it's less lack, it's less limitations. Peace is just kind of, you know what? I'm good. Imagine feeling that each and every day. Would you want to fight with somebody? Would you want to call somebody a name? No, you feel too good to lower yourself. So what we want more than anything seems is peace, inner peace. Of course, the opposite of peace is inner conflict. So this is asking us collectively to go within and to deal with whatever has not been dealt with that limits us in one way or another. Okay. Um, that's how I interpret it. Number three. Number two, sorry. Don't expect others to know what's in your heart or what your heart needs. So we have to stop asking the neighbor, hey neighbor, what does my heart need? The neighbor is like, what am I supposed to know? I'm not inside of you. So we have to find a way to learn how to trust ourselves for the decisions that we're making. And we might want to stop. It's not that it's it's not that we should not putting be putting trust in other people. It's how much trust we put in others to the point where we trust others over ourselves. So if you, for example, don't trust yourself, you're likely going to give your power away. We don't want that. We want power where it belongs, inside, not outside. Number three, be okay with choosing your own path to the degree that you can choose. I was having a hard time with deciphering what this means, but I think what this means is that when you make a choice, be okay with your choice. Be okay with choosing your own path. It's like, be okay with, be okay with choosing your own path. Okay, thank you. In other words, be confident in what you're choosing and why. Be confident in it. If you're not confident in what you're choosing, well, maybe don't choose it. So it's having, having that awareness. Number four, be curious with respect to of what's to come. Curiosity opens you to possibilities. If we are not open to other possibilities, then what we want is essentially for everything to stay exactly the same. That is not possible. Change is a big part of life. It is through the change that we evolve because the bends and curves in our own journey shape our perspective of life. Change of perspective is change of our world. Basically, what this says is be curious and know that there is always more. There's always more to be had in terms of experiences. But in order to have these other experiences, we have to be open to them. And when we have rigid thinking, then we are not open. So we have to deal with the rigidity around what we think. I like this message, I like how it sounds, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. Pile number one, this is, these are messages for you that apparently be good for you to hear. Number one, this is your theme. It's called mercy. I'm going to read to you what it says. Let compassion fill your world. Offer kindness to all living things. What you give, what you what you give you also receive so this is a i want to say it's like a powerful tool for manifestation 
it's like you are receiving a very powerful tool of mani for manifesting, pile number one. But it's it's not that you, how do I say this? You've given your power away to other people and you've learned to trust other people more than you trust yourself. And that's effectively giving your power away. So right off the bat, pile number one, okay? The message you want to hear right now is, take your power back, will you? Take your power back, will you? So think on that for a moment. Perhaps think of where you've given your power away, where you do continue to give your power away, how you give your power away. Um, when you think of yourself in a limiting way, that's very disempowering. So just notice how critical you are of yourself. Notice how critical you are of yourself. And then, pon and then ponder the idea, what is this giving me at the end of the day? Me being so critical of myself, what do I get out of that? Because I must be getting something in return, okay? In other words, identify why you criticize yourself over and over and over again, why you are bashing yourself, why are you uh, uh, minimizing yourself, that's all limiting, why are you doing that to yourself? Now you don't do it consciously, of course, but you do it to yourself, why? Understanding the reason behind why you do things is going to help you to free yourself from it because then you will be you will have the opportunity to finally realize what the problem is. You know what the problem is? Nothing more than your perspective you hold about yourself. And what did we talk about in the big message? It's all about change of perspective. Yes. Whether you see yourself as big or small is a matter of perspective. If you are standing on the island and you're the only person that's small, there's nothing to compare you to. I mean, you could be either small or big. There's nothing relative. When you have someone standing next to you and he's, he or she is much taller, then you have the comparison. Then you have the data. Without that person as a, 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 a data point for you to, to, to know yourself, you, you, you don't know yourself as a person or short or tall. You just have no idea. The message is trying to say this. It is absolutely okay to look up to one to another, <clears throat> to look up to for information. But it is not often very helpful when you put them on a pedestal. Here's why. When you put someone on a pedestal, you are already assuming that they are somehow elevated more than you. They're not. They're still human beings with bills to pay, risk to risks to recover, financial losses. Just because you put them on a pedestal does not mean they don't have regular life's issues. In other words, they're not perfect. I don't know who this message is for, it's very pointy. So this is for someone who tends to put people on a pedestal and automatically assuming that that person knows more than you. They may on a certain area or a certain topic, but it doesn't make that somehow, that person somehow better than you. <clears throat> you qualifying yourself as less than means you qualify somebody else as more than you. That's the, the you create that distinction. <clears throat> The question to you is, why do you believe that? Why do you believe that someone in authority knows more than you do, particularly when it pertains to what you want and what is important to you?
If you are not in your own authority of that, then you are essentially giving power away. Pile number one, stop giving your power away. It's not funny. I'm, I'm smiling because it's like, it's such a, it's such a like in your face message. Um, second message, magic, magical map shifter. For a while, for a moment here, you're not going to know where you're going and you may feel lost at times, okay? If you feel lost, this is an opportunity to find something new, okay? In other words, if you're lost, the best option you have is you have to choose. The question is, what will you choose that gives you something different than what you have gotten before? That is the biggest choice you'll have to make. Also, choosing to how to go about something. There is a situation and you're not sure how to go about dealing with the situation. So there is a, there's, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Okay. You may not know what to do for a while. Here's why. Because you're growing and changing so much that even at the end of this year, whenever you're listening to it, you're going to look back to this time and you're gonna say, oh my God, so much has changed. Because you would have had some sort of an experience, some sort of an epiphany, some sort of something that you're not aware of right now, okay? So you're in the discomfort of the unknown right now or will be very shortly. It is okay for you to feel this, this, this discomfort. Don't deny the discomfort. It's real. It's real. It shouldn't feel any other way than how it feels for you. There is no shoulds. I shouldn't feel this way. Well, it's not how it works. You feel how you feel. You must have a reason for it. It is also okay for you to be confused, particularly if feel confused, particularly if some, if you are used to being really in control. Because for a moment there, and I'm seeing the month of October, things it might feel like things are out of your control. There, this is not about something bad happening. In fact, this is this is all good stuff. But it's a little bit like um, you are being freed from your environment, as like these claws are are the vision I get is like these there were these claws on top of you keeping you down, and now they're lifting and you are being exposed to a completely different world, a completely different way of being. That changes your world instantly. Okay. Um, so be okay with feeling lost. It is okay for you to feel lost. It's not permanent, but it's necessary. And it's necessary because when you're in a space of loss, you either seek out someone to help you make a choice or you really have to dig deep to arrive at a decision. And for the next three months, I feel like pile number one, you're going to be a lot of, you're gonna be doing a lot of digging, digging. When I say digging, it's like, it's digging to your past for information that's valuable. It's, it's, it's like you're, you're looking for information. You're looking for information. You're really, you're really, um, you know, some of you are angry about something, but you're really, you're really propelled to make a change. You, you, you may not know what the change is, but you're propelled. It's like, I need to make a change. When you have that feeling, no, that change is coming. It's like you're, you, you are, you are already manifesting this change. You can perceive it, but it's not in front of you as a physicality. That's the best way that I can describe it. So you are also a very powerful magnet right now. So if you are a powerful magnet right now and you're confused, don't allow yourself to go always to the negative or towards the negative a lot. Because when we are in fear, that what's ha that's what happens. When we feel like we can't see anything, when we're confused, that's not a very stable way of being. 
Okay, I'm not saying that everything anything bad is happening. It's actually the opposite, but it is a change, and there is a change coming. Uh, I mean, we're all moving through change. So um, this also represents to me end of a cycle. So if change cycle to me go hand in hand. So you are pile number one at the end of a cycle. Uh, for some of you, it's a major cycle to do with relationships or relationships in general, okay? Some of you are leaving relationships and that could also mean a, a friendship, a, 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 an organization you used to belong to. It's like your priorities are shifting and changing. It's like you're changing flavor and you want something else out of life. You're at that space right now. At least that's what I'm intuitively feeling. So it's coming. Serious star blessings. Yes, proceed, be seen, push through. The first thing I hear is speak up for yourself. Yes, proceed, be seen, push through. I feel like I just want to say exactly what I said in the last message. Um, things are changing. And for some of you, they're changing fast. It's like fasten your seatbelts. Again, nothing bad. There's, there's nothing bad here. There's nothing bad. Is it uncomfortable? Yeah. Big changes are usually uncomfortable. Change, little changes can be uncomfortable. Don't, the, don't let the discomfort make you think or feel that this is something bad. It's not. It's not. There's infinite potential to you. You are here to explore your potential. In order to explore your potential, you cannot be holding yourself back because then you are not exploring your potential. There is more to you. You are here to realize that in this lifetime. Okay? No more hiding behind your identity. Okay, that's, an, that's an interesting message. Last but not least, surface. I've seen this message before. So the first thing I know about this that comes to me is the idea of being naked and vulnerable or being seen. Um, do you only let people see, I'm gonna say it differently. Do you have a tendency to emotionally want to hide from people? And we do that for various reasons. Generally, it's because of some pain. Okay? Do you tend to emotionally hide from other people, hide your emotions? I'm not talking about you should be displaying every single emotion every minute of the day in every situation. No, because there is this thing called appropriateness. This is not, but that, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you protecting yourself by emotionally withholding. If that is the case for you, if you have a tendency to emotionally withhold, they're saying, I'm saying, well, they know that. And it's like, oh, yeah, you if you emotionally withhold, you'll know because you use it as a tool. It's your tool to be safe. Okay? Unfortunately, this tool limits what you will experience. So if you want to experience more for yourself. You have to engage emotionally more with other people. Perhaps you are emotionally disconnected for yourself, from yourself. Perhaps you don't know how you feel. Well, sometimes that happens. But if you don't, if you never know how you feel, then there is something off with that. If you don't know how you feel, how is someone else supposed to know how you feel? They, hey, tell me, how am I feeling today? Well, I don't know how you're feeling. I'm not inside of you. There's something with your feelings and it's like you tuned down the dial to feel it. Maybe you don't want to feel. Maybe there is a, maybe you feel that the feeling too much is somehow a danger. Perhaps you have felt a lot before and you were completely overwhelmed. Perhaps you are so, um, um, so open that, that there was just too much coming at you and it was just too much. I mean, there's various reasons why one would tune down their you know, their, 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 their emotional, their emotions. It's generally for protection. So if you are pile number one, emotionally withholding, you are trying to protect yourself from something. From what? 
Because whatever that is, whatever you name, that's a wound that has not been healed yet. Okay. And as you know, I will always talk about the shadows because that's how we often can reach more for ourselves. When we get to intimate, we know our shadows because that is what holds you back. When you create, when you change your relation, when you shift your relationship with your quote unquote shadow, it's no longer nearly as limited. Is there anything else? This is an odd one. I don't know who this is for, but if you had a chance to travel around the world, which which three places you would you pick? What instinctively comes to mind? And for those of you who have like a boom, 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 those are likely the places in the world where you've lived before, because there's this natural pull towards, it could be more, but I'm, I'm just seeing, I'm seeing three right now. For some of you, the idea of Rome, you might have this unique connection to Rome without any ancestral connection or anything like that. Like you could be from a completely different part of the world. Uh, some of you may have aversion to certain countries or to certain places in the world. Same thing. It feels like it's a place you've been before, but perhaps didn't have the greatest experience. Okay, If that's the case and that is that part of the world is calling you, I have a funny feeling that go, by going there, some tremendous wound would heal. It's like you would be putting a closure to a very important chapter in your life, in your soul's evolution. So there's a potential for healing here, for sure. All right, so that's what I have for pile number one. All right, pile number two, let's see what we have for you. What's the theme for you? Faith. Believe you are not alone. Spirit is right beside you. Ask for guidance and it will come true. And it will come, sorry. Ask for guidance and it will come. Um, what I'm sorry, I'm just focusing on the, on the image that I'm getting. Some of you seem to be frustrated that you're not receiving. Like you've been asking and asking and asking, but nothing is coming. And you're getting, you're starting to almost like lose faith that the universe is listening to you. Here's what I want to say. Ask the universe for what you want, what you ultimately want. But at the same time, ask the universe to share with you how to get there. Okay. And the universe will respond differently. I don't know why, my brain can't compute why, but somehow it'll, so it's in a way, we, and we, in a way we ask questions. For example, what I'm getting is like, oh, universe, please help me, please help me, please help me. Uh, okay, the universe like, um, okay, help you in what? Uh, it's almost like you you want to identify within yourself, be very clear or, on what do you want help with? What do you want help with? Okay, for example, if you are having troubles with money, ask the universe to help you identify the root cause or the source of your issues with money. What is the root cause? Why am I having this experience? What must I believe in order for me to have this experience? So pile number two, it's about you looking into the root causes of your, of your um, struggles, okay? Struggles. Now, I just heard the word weight gain. So perhaps some of you are struggling with uh, weight gain and I'm just seeing a hormonal replacement. So I don't know who this is for, but this is just completely out of the left field, out of the left field. Uh, so, okay, maybe you're asking for help in uh, universe, please help me lose weight. And I'm saying to you, if this message is for you, you might want to look at some hormone replacement and lo and behold, this is what happens and you lose 10 pounds. See what I'm saying? It's, 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 you get the picture. 
Believe you are not alone. Spirit is right beside you. Ask for guidance and it will come. <clears throat> if you are desiring a better job, for example, ask the universe what you can do to attract a better job to you. Hey, universe, what is it I need to do to attract a better job to me? Okay. So what's happening is the universe is not fixing your situation. The universe is giving you the tools so that you can, quote unquote, fix your situation. The universe wants to empower you to make your choices and decisions. Okay. So don't say to universe, hey, universe, end my struggles with money because they, you, that's not the universe's job. That's your thing. But the universe will support you in the how by showing you perhaps where you resist money, where you, uh, when you're confronted with money, you have this <gasps> feeling and anxiety. Perhaps you will start to do some deeper inner work and you will realize that your connection to money is one of anxiety. Now, why on earth would you want anxiety in your life? Thank you very much. But if that's your connection to money, your unconscious understanding believes that money equals anxiety. So you naturally are going to want to push it away. It's not a logical thing. Although when you see it that way, it's extremely logical, but it's not rational. It's not rational. Okay. When the belief systems were formed, most of the, most of our belief systems were formed where our rational mind was not fully developed. So we were all in feelings and emotions and have faith in yourself. Spirit of place. What I'm hearing is this, find your own standing in this situation. Find your own standing in this situation. I wanna say it differently. Know that your input is equally as important. Know that your input is equally as important. Somebody's disagreement with your input does not make your input any less important. It's just met with a disagreement. This has nothing to do with levels of your importance, zero. Okay. Now, somebody may say to you, well, that's not as important. Still, you expressing your idea is just as important as the person expressing their idea. It's just as important and just as valuable. Maybe not as usable in a certain situation, but just as valuable. Also, hmm, I don't know who I want to say it to. It almost feels like a bit of a, a funny statement. But here's what I want to say. Don't pretend that you are, an, you are a know-it-all. Don't try to be know-it-all. You can't be, it's impossible, it's impossible. You can't know everything, it's not how it works. If you knew everything, your human life would have no meaning because you'd know everything already, okay? But this is a subtler message here, it's, it's like, Maybe it's someone you know, like, you know, someone tries to pretend to be smart because they feel insecure. So they will throw in big words and, 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 and certain statements, but it almost feels like it's rehearsed. It's, it's not real. It's not genuine. It's because they're trying to be seen by other people as someone who is, who is, uh, who is important. This person is trying to be seen to elevate themselves. Now, why would they need to do that? Why would they need to elevate themselves? in the first place. Why would you wanna, why would that person want to elevate? Like why, what's the point about trying to impress another person? Maybe then they will accept me. Okay, that's a valid point. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. 
Here's the question. Do you accept you? Do you accept you fully and wholeheartedly with all your kinks? Do you accept you? Yes or no? Most people will say no. That's just the way it is. Okay. If you don't accept yourself and you expect others to accept you, it's, how do I say this? It's like an equation. <clears throat> First and foremost, what I want to say is this. When you begin to really internally accept yourself, you're not going to be externalizing your needs for feeling accepted. In other words, you won't be, you won't be focusing so much on the outside to make you feel um, valuable. Okay. When you accept your own value and when you're like, I'm good. Like I've got a lot to offer. Everyone has a lot to offer. Everyone has a lot to offer. Some offer in certain areas more than others, but every single being has something to offer. We all have something of value. No way around that. And that includes you. Okay. When you wear it, when it's like, okay, well, of course I have value, you know, you'll feel much more relaxed. You won't be as dependent on what are other people thinking of me. It's not that you won't care, but it's like, yeah, okay, well, all right, whatever. It's like, it's not, it's not, it's not going to affect you nearly as much. So if you are very much swayed by what other people say or you're fearing rejection or things like that, make sure that you don't put up a front or a false mask because most people, First of all, why would you want to put on a mask to hide? What do, you, what do you think you're hiding? But anyway, most, in order to have solid relationships, um, they have to be emotionally fed. Something has to keep them. Something has to keep them engaged. Okay. Um, why am I saying this? It feels, I feel like this is going somewhere. Why am I saying this? I'm just going to move on to the next. When you accept yourself fully, you're going to start stop externalizing your need for safety. You're going to stop externalizing your need for safety, which means you're not going to put your, put your safety somewhere outside of you. It's impossible because you can't really out you can't really control outside of you. you. The best chance you get is you know how you know be in charge of yourself. That's just that's just the way it is. So pile number two, take off um, any kind of mask that you're wearing. Now, I'm not saying that you show up in a meeting and you, you know, tell everybody every intimate moment or, or situation in your life. It's, no, I'm not saying that. Don't be, don't be stupid. Don't do that. But I, what I would say is just be confident enough to just, just be yourself. Just like, I'm good. as I'm equal as everybody else. I don't have to. I don't have to pretend, I don't have to try extra hard. I'm just like, this is good. You know how amazing it is to be around people like that? Because they're very calming. They're very calming. When you don't feel good about yourself, you're constantly, your nerves are constantly kind of sort of waiting to be attacked. And that's this anxious state is not very fun. Remember what we said about uh, what humanity wants really ultimately is peace. It's peace, right? So this is talking about place, spirit of place. April and fall are important. So April is a month, fall is a time of year. Somehow these two, April and fall, are somehow important in the month of October. So maybe this message is going to mean something to you around the month of October. And, and there is more. There's more message. Okay. Um, memories of Atlantis, spiritual acceleration, progress, technology. Uh, 
I want to say you're moving up, baby. There's an Egyptian symbol here. So likely one of the things that you might be connecting to in terms of other countries might be Egypt, ancient Egypt. Uh, perhaps you've romanticized about being in Egypt, living in Egypt. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good giveaway that there is a connection there. Um, and, and what this message also means is that you are becoming, a, you're becoming much more aware of the connections you have beyond this realm, beyond this physicality. You have a lot of connections. I want to say the word blue man, blue beings. Okay. I, I am. I'm going to throw names, Arcturians, Pleiadians, um, like other star systems or galaxies, whatever they're called. Uh, whoever you are, if this resonates with you, there's a, there's a lot of influence in your life um, through these beings, through these different um, consciousnesses, as I want to say, okay? You're also going through some clearing right now, and it might feel a little bit stormy, okay? And they're saying unpack, okay? When I say a little bit stormy, um, you're not happy. I'm seeing you like, mm, you're mad. You're mad. You're mad because things are not going your way. Um, here's a question. What if you had it your way, but your way was sure to quote unquote fail? Would you still want it your way? Would you still want it your way? Likely the answer was, well, no. Okay. So maybe let's try a different way. This is you looking at your life and realizing there's more than one way of seeing what is in front of you. It's all about perspective change. Again, that's consciousness itself. Okay. You're in the middle of a bit of a st storm, but I want to say like a mental storm. There's a lot going on in your mind. You actually, your heart may be racing. You might be feeling like you panic. You're having anxiety attacks. Uh, and I'm hoping that's a very small number of you. Uh, your, uh, your, your physical body, your electrical system is going through an upgrade and that is creating a bit of an internal storm in your physical body and or your etheric body, your energetic body. Okay, so you are in the midst uh, an upgrade. Okay, emotions will come up. You will feel things you haven't felt for a long time. Um, you might feel a little bit confused. I, I don't know what this change that it's a big change we're going through. Anyway, it's temporary. And you're leaving something behind. No question about it. If here's how I want to present it. Seeing something as a loss versus gain is a matter of perspective. Now, before you scream, here's what I want to say. I'm not talking about losing someone and thinking, what have I gained from this? I mean, you probably have, but that's, I'm not talking about that, obviously. Okay. But if you are, for example, leaving a job or the job has abruptly ended and you you might have wanted a different job you maybe never thought about having something different and that abrupt change forces you to seek something you normally wouldn't have because you would be limiting yourself so an example of you quote unquote losing your job is an opportunity to start something different and because we are creatures of habit even the things that we don't really want, we have a tendency to hold on to. So here's a bit of a warning pile number two. If you have been wishing for things to get out, go away from your life and you're like passionate about it, I bet you anything you're going to create it. It may not come in the way in the, in the package you are wanting. It may, it may come out of a left field, but I can almost promise you, um, you're going to manifest it. So if you are in a space of manifesting, which 
you are. Think big. Don't limit yourself. Don't give your power away. You decide what is right for you. Trust yourself. You be your own authority. It's the best chance you've got. That doesn't mean don't listen to what other people say or what they have to offer. But always check with yourself, is this true for me? Just because someone claims to know something more than you do, and very much they might, whatever they offer you doesn't automatically mean it automatically applies to you. I mean, in certain cases, yes, but you may be receiving information from somebody you hold uh, a high, hold highly in, in a high regard, and they may say something to you, and you might be thinking, well, because they said it, it must be a gospel. No. It just means they said something, it's valuable, but is it right for you? Is it right for you? And we often don't ask that choice. We often are not even conscious of that choice. We just automatically give our power away. Just we're trained to do that from day one. Okay, So this is all about retraining. Memories of Atlantis, spiritual acceleration, progress, technology. Okay, Like I said to you at the beginning, you are very powerful creator you are in this i believe i said you're in this energy of powerful creation your thoughts matters your thought matters your emotion of course matters because that is what that is the creative force for your for your thought for your concepts so when you feel very strongly about something and you hold that as an energy it's almost impossible for you not to attract it again maybe not in the same package but as far as the feeling is the state yes So if you're wanting to be a rich person, put yourself in a space mentally, emotionally, spiritually, energetically, where you literally vibrate at that level, the level of being abundant, feeling abundant. And if you don't know what that is, create it in your mind. Literally create it. You want it. That's why you already... We can tell that you know what it is because if you didn't, no, you wouldn't want it so much. It's like people want love because they, they know what love feels like. Even those who have not experienced love yet, they want love. Well, because we're, it's where we come from. It's where love is. Love is within us. But that's a, that's a whole different topic. Okay? Be proud of yourself, pile number two. You don't often pat yourself on the back. And it's important for you to see, realize how much good work you have done already. If you're questioning yourself, am I doing good work? Then perhaps you need to start recognizing all the good work you have done, whatever that means to you, okay? Whether you were um, named for it, highlighted for it, or mentioned for it, that's almost irrelevant. You have done a lot of good work already. And for some of you, I want to say as a volunteer. So for those of you who are volunteering or have volunteered, uh, it's you. D d d your soul is getting a big payoff for doing that. It's because it's um, most people volunteer because they want to. Like if they really hate it, it's going to show. Then they're just not going to be really good at their job. So, in you know, for you to be in that position, you you obviously move. You move through life with compassion, and that's a very beautiful thing. Thank you. So the same compassion that you express to others, how about bring some of that compassion back to you for once? If you feel that you need anything out of life and you had only one chance to ask for it, and the universe would grant it to you, what would it be? Think about it carefully, because you're not going to want to say, I want a nice car. Because in a month from now, you're going to go back to square one. So think about that question very carefully. Or the answer, last but not least, reaction. She feels very unsure to me. So you are likely feeling very really unsure right now. You are absolutely going through a rebirth right now. So 
you feeling a little bit uncomfortable, and I don't mean a little bit, you feeling uncomfortable is all part of the course. In fact, enlightenment, if we could use that analogy, is very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. From the very basis, the discomfort is first and foremost an energetic level because to be more enlightened means you literally hold more of light in your body. And if your body is not used to it, because it's not, because we've been vibrating at a certain level, that higher frequency is going to have an impact on our frequency that we're used to. It's going to feel a little bit bumpy, okay? energetically speaking. And when that happens, things tend to come up. A lot of fears tend to come up. A lot of self-doubts tend to come up. A lot of negative self-thinking and questioning. So watch as you are in this space, uncomfortable space, notice, notice your shadow popping up. What's popping up for you right now? Because you are in a, this is a chance for you to rebirth, rebirth yourself, which is to give yourself, you birth yourself anew, to start over, essentially. It's, however, starting over doesn't mean you have no knowledge. Starting over means you get to try again with all the wisdom and information you have accumulated thus far. In other words, let your experiences guide you. If your experience was that you have not been loved, which is impossible, but if you're, if you're, one of your beliefs is I am not loved. <clears throat> Being in this uncomfortable space is going to make that shadow part of you come up. I am not loved. So you might be experiencing situations where you believe what's happening is a sign that you're not being loved. No, it's not that you're not being loved. You're loved very much. Is you don't allow love in. Why? What are you trying to protect yourself from? Love hurts? Okay. If love hurts, if that's what you believe, then we have to look at the pain that you are still holding on to because if it hurts, well, then it hurts. You don't want it to hurt anymore. And you don't want it to hurt is because you know what pain is. You understand what pain is. Part of your experiences as being a human is to experience pain. Now, a human mind would say, why on earth would, why on hell would I choose to experience pain? from a soul's perspective, so that you know what pain is and what pain is not. Otherwise, you have no idea, right? But that's a very, that's what your soul believes. That's what you, that's where your soul sits. Humans don't have that perspective because it's much more narrow. But there is an issue here with either giving or, or receiving, giving of yourself or receiving love from others. So you will also emotionally tend to hold yourself back. And if that's the case, your relationships would not have been very satisfying. I doubt they would be very satisfying because um, you, you're you're because you're not you're not you're not fully engaged. So you only have half experience. If that makes any sense. So that's what I have for you, pile number two. All right, pile number three. Let's see what theme we have for you we have energy life force is flowing open yourself to receive the power from within beautiful you might want to take a look at pile number two because i feel like that's somewhat um, re relevant relevant there'll be pieces i feel that will feel right for you uh, this is about expanding your own power it's about expanding your own power so how how do we expand our own power by first realizing what our power is by realizing what our power is your thoughts your emotions all generate power 
I don't know how to describe it any other way. Um, how do I describe it any other way? You are a powerful creator. Whether you like it or not, you are designed that way by the very source that has created you. The disempowered comes from the type of thinking or belief system that says that you are less than. When you believe or see yourself as less than, what you do in essence is you create your own confinement. You create your own inner prison. And because you create your own inner prison, you are the prisoner of your own mind. You are the prisoner of your own mind. Think about that for a moment. The logical question is, well, why the hell would I want to imprison myself? Exactly. Why would you? Why would you want to imprison yourself? Maybe you don't realize that you're doing it already. Maybe it's because you, you, we've always done it. This is just what you know life to be. You don't even see it as a prison. It just is. Any thought pattern that is limiting you and your power is effectively limiting your freedom to experience whatever it is. Because you are an infinite potential. Logically, conceptually, you know that. But do you believe it? Yeah. Probably not so much. But you're starting to. And this is the important point here to highlight. You are starting to finally recognize just how much power you really have. Recognizing or remembering just how much power you really have. And because of that, you begin to look at yourself very differently. You are realizing that when you focus your attention very powerfully in a certain direction, this is where life force goes in order to create that experience, that expectation for you. In other words, what you deeply expect, you generally receive. That's how the universe works. Well, Joanna, I'm expecting a, a beautiful relationship. Why is that not happening? Well, perhaps because your shadow expectation is there are no good relationships. Why? Because perhaps this is what you know relationship to be, not a good one. If that's all you know, if that's how you are programmed, so to speak, that's what you will tend to attract to yourself over and over and over again, because that's all you know. That's your comfort zone. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is a prison. So you are being asked to unprison yourself, power number three. <clears throat> what does that mean, Joanna? Well, first and foremost, let's get one thing straight. Do you believe that you've created your own prison? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then you are completely free. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't be here. Just simple as that. So on some level, you have imprisoned yourself without a doubt normal human condition. Okay. So choose to acknowledge that you do imprison yourself. You may not know how yet, but that's another conversation. When you recognize that you do imprison yourself in a certain area, the question you want to ask yourself, why do I do that? What am I getting from imprisoning myself? The logical mind will jump right away and say nothing. No, that's impossible. That's impossible. You wouldn't be holding yourself back unless you got something from it. You have an incentive. Okay? 
perhaps to you holding back equals being safe. Perhaps the last time you experienced your own power, it put you in a very uncomfortable and very peculiar position. And perhaps in that moment, you actually, quote unquote, lost your power. There's an experience there that's being shown by someone who is very powerful, but then they are imprisoned. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a paradox, isn't it? It's a paradox. So some of you will have a lifetime that I'm tapping into that has to do with power, empowerment, and being imprisoned and having no choices or no control over one's life. Okay, so there is something there to, to look into. Okay. But for most of you, the overall message is stop hiding your power back. Stop holding your power back by recognizing just how you do that. Okay, how do I hold myself back? Okay, well, I tell myself that this can't happen to me. Okay, why do you tell yourself that, Joanna? Why can't you say, oh, this too can happen to me? Well, probably because I'm used to saying it that way over and over again. I don't even think about what it is that I'm saying. Yet I'm saying it. Joanna, time to stop what you're saying and say something different. In other words, choose differently for yourself. Don't just hope. Choose that there's a distinction. There's a distinction. Okay, I'm choosing to be happy. Perfect. Let's talk about what are some of the things in your life to be happy, that you're happy about. Well, I don't know. I like to draw. Okay, put out a piece of paper. Let's get your crayons. I want you to draw. You'll resist it for a few minutes, but then I want you to draw. I want you to get lost in it. And in 10 minutes, I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, how do you feel? You know what you're going to say? Oh, my God, I haven't felt this year, this good for so long. I almost forget what it feels to feel good. Well, drawing is helping you to remember. It's inside you. It's just helping you remember. Do that. That's you choosing to be happy. Now, does that mean that all, all of a sudden your entire life's existence and its challenges are going to be disappearing? No, they're going to be right in front of you, still standing there, but you from a much happier space will be able to deal with whatever life throws at you. That's the difference. You are not small. Stop comparing yourself. And I feel like pile number two talked about that. You're not small, stop comparing yourself. Now, when I say the word small, the word I wanna say is measure up. It's like you feel you don't measure up. What do you, you, if you feel like you don't measure up, what is it you're trying to measure up to? What is that, what is that ideal? Is it, what is that? What is that? And wh why, why are you doing that? What's the point? Why are you trying to measure yourself against other people? To see how, to see kind of where you're at versus where they're at? Okay, yes, but this is about putting yourself down. You put others higher on a pedestal, and therefore, logically, you must be lower. Why? Why do you choose to do that? Maybe you don't know any other way. Maybe you don't know any different. Maybe this is what you were taught. Maybe all of these things. I don't know. There's always a reason why. Once you realize the reason why, then you can do something about the problem. And by the way, there is no problem other than how you see things. The moment you begin to see things differently and the moment you begin to see yourself for the power of being that you are, your entire world is going to change. It's like the entire world is going to start reflecting back what you feel. That's how it works. Remember, how you feel is a powerful creative tool. So if you want to feel happy, decide you're going to feel happy. If you can't think of something happy that makes you happy, if you're having a hard time with that, then engage yourself in something that makes you happy. But then do it. Commit to yourself. Do it. You know the Nike. Just do it. Do it. You have to participate. It can't happen to you. That's violation of, 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 of law of free will. It cannot happen to you. 
and you must do more than just want it. You must choose and decide how you're going to bring it closer to you. Okay, I only will be happy if the entire world changes tomorrow and everybody's going to be nice to each other. Well, I hate to tell you, but you're not going to find happiness for a long time. Not going to happen. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint. If you base your happiness on that, you're screwed. Decide to be happy. Decide to be happy, to own your power. And then look, and then see how the rest of the world looks to you. Because I have a feeling that when you start seeing yourself from this higher perspective, everything you see is going to change. Your meaning of life will change. It'll become not less or better, it'll become something different. You are in a monumental stage, pile number three. I don't know who you are, but whatever is transpiring within you is not a small thing. Congratulations. Uh, 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 yeah, this is uh, big. Okay, next message. We have moonlight and we have protecting treasure. So the moonlight is about mystery, the unknown needing to really tune in. It did come to me in reverse. Um, perhaps what this message is saying is you need to really pay attention to your intuition right now. Uh, also, this is not a time to beat around the bush. The whole notion of beating around the bush. When we are beating around the bush, we're not, we're not, we're kind of are trying something, saying, say something, but we're not really saying it. It's like, Say the damn thing that you want to say and mean it. Be precise with your words. This is about precision with your words. This is also about listening to your intuition. It's almost like you can't hear yourself. They're saying other people hear you, but it's like you can't hear yourself. That's interesting because what this is saying to me is that if you can't, why? If you, and I don't mean physically, of course, Metaphorically, if you can't hear yourself, that was the, that, what does that mean? If you can't hear yourself, what does that mean? I actually don't know what it means. If you can't hear yourself. It's like I'm, it's like I'm constantly moving around. It's, that's a really weird, if I can't. That's a very interesting feeling. Also, if I can't trust myself, I can't feel confident. So this is about, do you want to feel confident? Do you want to begin to feel more confident? Learn to trust yourself. Show yourself situations where you have trusted your intuition and it worked out okay. Okay. Maybe there have been some where you have listened to your intuition and you got the opposite of what you wanted. Perhaps it is what you needed. Perhaps it is what you needed. In fact, every experience has something to offer you from the soul's perspective. Doesn't matter how, doesn't matter what the experience is. From a higher perspective, every experience has value. Every experience. I also need, feel, hear you needing to be shh, quiet, just really be quiet, which is one of the first points that they talked about is the need to be still and quiet to see what your heart says. So if you're in a situation right now and you're trying to decide, what does your heart say? What's, it's, what's your heart's perspective on the issue? And then what is the ego's perspective on the issue? Just. It's really important that you tune into your heart, pile number three. Okay. Incidentally, peace is also where in the heart area, unless it's sandwiched by a whole bunch of negative emotion or the type of emotions we don't care for. Okay, peace is it's either in this heart or in a solar plexus. That's where I feel the center of peace. Now, I also don't want to disregard people who are going through wars where 
the entire country is at war and there is collectively a lot of unrest. I would never say to a person, hey, find your own peace. I mean, you could, but I would find that highly, highly, highly inappropriate because I wouldn't be meeting them where they're at. These kinds of individuals, they need their priorities, safety and security. So I wouldn't ask that person to meditate. I mean, if they're open to it, I might, but that would not be my first course of action. My first course of action would be, I can see you're at a lot of unrest. How can I help you? How can I make this better? Okay. So are they relying on peace from me? Well, I'm helping them. Okay. I'm not saying, hey, find your own peace. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I want to make that very, very, very clear for some reason. Gaia Gateway Activation, Learning Experiences, Wisdom Transmission, Earth Intelligence. <laughs> this is an interesting metaphor. You are bigger than the biggest wave you've ever seen. So if you've ever seen on television these massive waves that they're like as tall as buildings, the message to you is you're bigger than that. You're bigger, you're bigger than the biggest waves you've ever seen, live or in television. And if you haven't seen any big waves, Google big waves and go on YouTube and see what you find. You're bigger than that. There's a, this is an interesting message for you, okay? And because of that, you are extremely powerful. I mean, big waves are very powerful. They come crashing down. You have a lot of influence. You are a very influential person. And how do you know that? Uh, it's your magnetism. You have a very magnetic way about you. Okay. Um, sometimes people judge you for the wrong things. It's like they judge you. <laughs> they judge you for being successful. Okay. Why would somebody? judge somebody for being successful. I mean, we all have our quirks, right? But for the most part, people admire you and respect you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but this feels like a very specific message. It's time for you to own your stuff. It's time for you to own it. It's time for you to step into your own authority. It's time. If this is meant for you, this message is going to hit you on a much deeper level than the other two messages, okay? You've come into this lifetime believing that you are separate and you, are be and you have identified yourself as an individual. That's an illusion. That's the, uh, that's the result of the forgetfulness veil, if you will. Your veil is thinning right now, and it's thinning very, very quickly. What does that mean? A lot more is available to you at a much faster rate, and that may feel a little bit wobbly at times. You are likely someone that identifies with the idea of a healer, I want to say the word karmic practitioner. I don't even know what that means, but I guess someone who uh, specializes in karmic releases. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, shadow work is about karma, so I guess that's what I do. Um, I'm not claiming the message, but it sounds interesting. It's like your mind is also sobering. What does that mean? you are becoming much more instinctually clear. I don't know how to say it any other way, but it's, you're, becoming, you're becoming sharper in what you are perceiving, how you are perceiving, and how fast you are perceiving this. This is part of your gift. Big part of your gift is the connection you have with the other worlds, and you have... Um, forge these, these relationships over lifetimes, lifetimes upon lifetimes upon lifetimes. In other words, what you do is absolutely natural to you. It's part of who you are. 
stop denying that right now. Stop denying. It's okay. It's okay for you to be and feel powerful in this life. It is okay. You will not be punished. You will not be judged. Well, yes, people will say things about you, but those are not knives and guns and chopping equipment. You will not be prosecuted for the words that you speak. You will not be vandalized, okay? Uh, in other words, being the power for you, that is you, is absolutely safe and okay for you right now. This is it, you've arrived. Doesn't mean it's over, done with. It means from this point forward, your journey is beyond your expectations. Be open for it. You have no idea what's coming to you. And when I say that, this is massive, big, important stuff. It actually feels overwhelming because it comes with the idea of respon tremendous responsibility. So I don't know who you are, but there's a responsibility tied to it. What you do uh, and the connections you have and the information, the source, the information you have, or the, the and the, the source of the information that is flowing through you, that your connection with that source is very ancient. It's 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 a natural ability you have. And you've come here to share that with the rest of the world. You've come here to share that with the rest of the world. The how you do it, that's all up to each individual, but the but the, fa the fact that you do do it is the very reason why you're here, why you've put yourself on this earth. And they're showing me someone on the other side as a metaphor. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people and they're like, no, don't do this, it's too hard. And you're like, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, no, don't do it, it's too hard. No, I'm gonna do it. And you're like, I don't care what you think, screw you. I'm just gonna do it. Boom, life. <gasps> So you might surprise yourself with some of the strengths that you are developing. They're almost peculiar. I don't know how, but that's just what I want to say. They're like invisible forces of life that you can hold in your hand and it's like it's real. That's, that's how I'm seeing it. It's very strange to me. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you begin to literally see particles of energy in your peripheral view. So this is about seeing, but it's not seeing necessarily with your eyes. It's, it's, it's openness to seeing so much more. Now, don't let that scare you. If it scares you a little bit, you must ask yourself the question, why? Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of responsibility. As you know, they're saying, with power comes tremendous responsibility. So you've been asking to own your own power, okay? There it is, it's happening. Now what? Now what? What will you do with it? That's the question. That's the ultimate question. Now that you have your power, what will you do with it? How will you use it? How are you going to play with it? Now what? You get to decide. Last but not least, fragments. You have healing hands. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, it's like you can see through your hands. There's an eye here, yes, but this represents to me an ability. You, you're putting hands on somebody or above somebody and you can, you can sense pockets of either information or pockets of heat. I'm, sen I'm sensing heat. So you might be, um, uh, uh, you may be uh, a healing uh, practitioner, a Reiki healer, or energy healer, or anything. You might call yourself a psychic, a psychic practitioner. I, whoever you are, you have, but you would know this. I suspect if you, I'm talking to you about this, you would know it, okay? You also have incredible connection with nature. I mean, incredible connection with nature. And I would go as far as saying some of you have been what they would call shamans, but they're saying intellectual shamans. What does that mean? 
uh, shamans dealing with the mind. Okay, well, that's interesting. Shamans who, shamans who, shamans who help heal the mind. Okay, well, to me, as Joanna, mind is everything. It's all mind, but that's a completely different topic. Okay. So spend more time in nature. It's actually necessary for you to spend time in nature on a regular basis because it it really grounds a lot of that energy because you're working with some hefty teachers. You're working with some pretty big wigs, if I can use that analogy. You're working with some pretty big energies and you, you, it takes a lot on your physical body. So it's possible you might actually feel tired when you're channeling this energy. Um, and if if that's if that's the case, then here that this is the reason why you are pouring a lot of frequency through you to this earth. So it's important that you ground it. Okay. Is there anything else? Trust yourself in this process. I mean, I can say that to any pile. I can say that to myself, too. but it's worth repeating. Trust yourself in the process. If you don't know what you're doing, check with your intuition. If you if you feel like your intuition is not loud enough, ask someone to help you to connect to your intuition so that at least someone can guide you to a space where you can hear or you can see. Because a good practitioner will show you the answers, the keys, and they're always inside. That's what, a, in my humble opinion, that's what a good practitioner, healer, sort of whatever, will do. It will show you the way to your insights to help you discover the treasure that is within you. Infinite wisdom. Okay. That's what I have for you, pile number three. Thank you so much for this. I hope you enjoyed it. I did too. I like the flow. Um, I would love to hear your comments. Let me see how this mess how these messages resonated with you. Um, there's a lot of finalizing going on. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing and just like we're we're packing things up. We're moving. We're moving. We're almost at the end of the year. We have another three and a half months to go or so. So uh, no surprise there. But um, 2026, 2025, okay, in 2020, 2025, I was shown 2026. 2026 feels really big to me. Very, mm, very, mm, a lot of stability. So I, I feel like maybe 2025 is going to experience some turmoil. You're like, more turmoil? Haven't we had enough? Apparently not. So with that said, uh, check out the free tools and you will be notified where I am about to announce something fantastic in the next few weeks. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.